This video is not about running. It's about Kerry. Except it's not really about Kerry. It's about people from Kerry and saying thank you to them. I've known a lot of people from Kerry over the years, lots of relatives, friends, and these three stories, none of them take place in Kerry. Rather, they take place outside of Kerry, but they all involve Kerry people. And the first is a wedding I went to where the, all the, the groom's family and the bride's family were from Kerry and where the best man made the most memorable speech I've ever heard at a wedding. Now, at Irish weddings, sometimes the best man's speech, well, it can go on for so long that people usually take bets on how long it's going to take and there's all, all that happens all the time. But at this wedding, <laughs> it wasn't a huge wedding, but it was, it was uh, you know, the best man typically stands up and he thanks the bride. He tells her how lovely she's looking. He thanks various people, the flower girls, all that kind of stuff. And then he would commence his speech. And his speech was so memorable that I memorized it for you in its entirety. And this is the speech. I memorized the entire part. The best man stood up and he said, there are many things I could say about my brother, but I won't. <laughs> and he sat down. And that was, uh, that was the end of the most memorable speech I have ever heard at a wedding. I still, yeah, that, I, I'm not exactly sure that he have a whole lot of things he wanted to say about his brother, but didn't want to say it about his brother. Or were they just to say about his brother? <laughs> Either way, it was the most memorable speech I've ever heard. About 20 years ago, myself and my then girlfriend went to Prague. And it was, I think it was my birthday. It was a kind of birthday treat. We were going to go to Prague and we did all the usual tourist things that we do in Prague. Went to the Charles Bridge and the river and various different things. And it was fantastic. We had a great time. But uh, towards the end of our short trip, the girlfriend who I'm not going to name here, <laughs> the girlfriend, <laughs> she, uh, who was from Kerry. So she said, that'll narrow it down slightly. <laughs> anyway, she, uh, she uh, says she'd like to go to the opera. And I knew nothing about the opera then. I know a tiny bit more <laughs> since, but <laughs> I, I said, sure. Now, I had no part in the arrangements for the opera whatsoever. I simply went along as the, you know, followed along while we went early in the morning and, and, and tickets were booked for this opera. I don't know what the title of the opera was, but I, I'm not really, I don't know anything about that. But anyway, the, it was booked. And I decided, I was thinking, well, we've booked the tickets for the opera and it's like the morning and, uh, you know, the, the opera's in the evening. What will we do? And so I thought, right, OK, I know what we'll do. <laughs> we go and sample some lovely Czech beer. It will probably not come as too much of a surprise that I probably had too much Czech beer. Yeah. <laughs> so before the opera, went back to the hotel in the evening for, you know, a, a bit of shut eye, a bit of, you know, <laughs> try and revive myself. And we went to the opera. Now, again, I had, we, I, I'm just following along. <laughs> and we go into this lovely old building in Prague. And we're in a, it's one of those kind of theatres. It's a bit like uh, the John Wilkes Booth event. You've got these little boxes and we're in a little box. And it's really nice. It's, um, there's, there's a couple of people at the front. There's a woman and her, her child, their locals, and then herself. <laughs> and I sit at the back in this small little thing. And the curtains are down and the curtains come up or they go out. Anyway, it starts. <laughs> and out come all these men in there dancing up and down and in their pointy shoes and their tights and, you know, and I fall asleep. And it's one of those, you know, I, you know, it's one of those where you, you you're, you're kind of going. And then, so I'm doing this, you know, <laughs> so I'm struggling to stay awake as the action unfolds. And I get, get, Time passes and I start to, the, the end of the first act is upon us and I start to revive. I suddenly start waking up and I'm feeling, oh, this is, you know, I'm kind of, and I notice that uh, she doesn't look happy at the front. She's not, not looking very happy. And the act ends and she suddenly turns around and storms out really angrily. And I'm thinking, oh, right, I'm in trouble here. <laughs> so I don't know what I've done. I know I haven't been snoring, but, I, you know, and so she storms out. And I start talking to this uh, woman, her child, to speak perfect English, and I'm looking forward to the second half now. I'm, I'm now revived, I'm fully awake. And <laughs> uh, she comes back in, and as a hoo it turns out we're not in the opera at all. 
we're in the ballet. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the <laughs> men on tights and, you know, and not only are we in the ballet, I'm in a doghouse. <laughs> and uh, I thought we'd just sit there and watch the end, but no, I, I was dragged out, frog marched I was, back to the opera on the other side of town. And by the time we got to the opera on the other side of town, it was closed. The people were coming out. <laughs> now, I think this story reflects badly on one person, and that's me. I should have been better company. But yeah, I, I was, when we got back home to Ireland, I would tell this story and, and she would go mad. It's the only reason I haven't <laughs> named her. <laughs> but yeah, that was my uh, trip to Prague. The next story involves my favourite Kerry person of all time, my old man. <laughs> and uh, he was a proud and passionate Kerry man. And, and really, I've never met another type. They all love the place. And I, I, with good reason, men, women, they love Kerry and they call it the kingdom. And uh, having run the Dingle Marathon, I can fully see and appreciate why. And my dad, despite the fact that he was a passionate Kerry man, lived a huge amount of his time overseas and in Dublin <laughs> when he was sort of 14 to 20 or thereabouts. But once he got the job it, with Guinness, he was sent around the world to various breweries. And that's more or less how he finished the rest of his entire life, going from brewery to brewery around the world followed by me <laughs> and uh, yeah he was we in 73 we moved to Jamaica and then Af in 78 or thereabouts I think my dad went to uh, work in Africa for many years and then he got reposted to Jamaica and I went out to see him on vacation and I guess he was probably the same age I am now and I was in my late 30s I think and my dad when we were growing up my dad was a <laughs> He was a very, uh, he wasn't approved by any manner or shape or form. He wasn't a religious man, but, but when there was uh, scenes on Irish TV that were PG rated or whatever is above PG rating, you know, uh, maybe it's PG, when there's parental guidance, uh, he would simply get up, walk across and turn off the TV. <laughs> it was very odd, sort of some scene coming on in a movie and you'd be sitting there going, well, hey, and then <laughs> up he'd get it, turn off and be, no one would say anything. Now, my mother, on the other hand, would, you know, anything, anything goes, she, was, she wasn't really too bothered. But yeah, and I've since discovered this happened in very many Irish house, households. Maybe it was a thing. Maybe that, what, that's what my dad thought parenting involved. <laughs> anyway, I'm in Jamaica and he's uh, working in a brewery and it's a stag night. There's one of the younger workers is, is having his stag night. And my dad says, look, we're going out to a bar. Uh, do you want to come along? like he needed to ask <laughs> and anyway so we go along and my dad didn't drink and um we went along to this bar and bars in jamaica aren't like bars in ireland they're they're not like it doesn't say like pub on the front like sort of more uh, anyway we went to this bar which seemed to be in his house and in gardens of the back of a house and there was trees and there was all this sort of stuff palm trees banana plants all that kind of lovely jamaican stuff and we had a couple of beers and then it was decided somehow or other that we were going to somewhere else. Now, my dad was by far the most senior of the people in terms of age, and I suppose in terms of his employment status of the various bunches. It's probably my old man and 10 or 15 other guys, all in their, I'd say, 20s, 30s, maybe most early 40s. And we go along, we get in a car, and my dad drives off, and I have no idea where we're going. And we end up in some sort of another suburban house, and you know what? And we go inside and it's some sort of large room and I'm thinking, right. and there's chairs in a, in a sort of L stretching out there and then they go across. And, and there's about 10 seats on the long L and about five on the short L. And, and I sit down in the short L, my dad sits beside the stag in the middle on the long L. So <laughs> I'm gazing around the room and there's, I suppose, a couple of tables and someone brings out beers. And I'm kind of thinking, what's going on here? Now, I can be incredibly naive. I mean, sometimes it takes me a while to figure out what's actually going on. <laughs> and so I see that, that you know, we're, the L is arranged around as a sort of step, a sort of six inch step. And I'm thinking, hmm. And then I notice this shiny pole <laughs> right in the middle. And I'm thinking, oh, right. Ah, hmm. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and out come three very beautiful Jamaican women. And um, they start doing their thing. And uh, they're this is going on and, and I'm getting a bit uncomfortable, you know, <laughs> since they're my dad's diagonally opposite. And I'm thinking, oh, oh crikey. So, so anyway, um, the, the main, uh, the main uh, 
performer, the, the lead act. Uh, she so at, after a while she makes a beeline off the stage and she goes straight for the guys to stag, and uh, she sits sits down on him and she turns around and there's all of this and he's he's absolutely loving it. He's he's absolutely thrilled. It's like, <laughs> and it's this guy, you know, and he's in his in his he's in his element. Everyone else is just cheering and all that sort of stuff. And at that point, I turn to the guy beside me and I say, I hope to God she doesn't come over here. At which point, <laughs> she makes a beeline for me. So she comes right across. And then I realize, oh, it's a setup. I'm, <laughs> they've realized it's gonna embarrass me. It's gonna embarrass, but more importantly, it's gonna embarrass the old man. So she comes over and <laughs> she sits down on my lap. And as she sits down on my lap, we were sitting on these sort of white plastic French chairs. You see them in beaches and places all over the world. I think they're called monoblock or something like that. Mono, anyway. These chairs are ubiquitous white plastic chairs with four legs. And as she sits down on me, it turns out there's a fault in one of the chairs. <laughs> the added weight, the legs go splaying out. I fall flat on my back. And as I fall flat on my back and she falls, I manage to give her a, <laughs> a, 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 a in, unintentional soft kick with my size 12s. And uh, everyone erupts in laughter, including herself. The place goes riotous everyone is laughing their heads off <laughs> including me <laughs> and anyway i get out into the car afterwards and uh i'm sitting there and my dad turns to me and says you dodged a bullet on that one didn't you <laughs> and yeah i dodged yet another bullet really i have so much to be thankful to carry people for um <laughs> apart from half my genes <laughs> there's the when I went to Dingle last weekend and you, you run the marathon, you're aware of how many people are inconvenienced that they give up their entire morning so that you can run by their houses. They can't drive out. They can't do anything. And all they get out of it, as far as I can see, is a whole pile of litter at the front that they have to clean up. So, yeah, I owe huge thanks to the people for that and also for every volunteer on the marathon. And the hospitality in around Dingle is just fantastic. If you get a chance to go, even if it rains out of the heavens, it's still a great place to visit I really do yeah the, the the sense of fun and and all the people from all around the world that you meet on the marathons we have people from Bromley and from near Stratford and Avon and all sorts of people as well as people from Dingle to Moss and various other people met and it, it is it's one of the fun of, of, of a marathon is, is meeting people with a shared experience and you're running at a similar time as they are and of course thanks to my great friend Liam we had a, a great time I mean just run around talking about stuff and you know and it was just it was just great five hours beautifully spent and of course thanks to all of you for watching listening and for uh, yeah all of the sport and see you further on down the road